Hello everyone, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and I've been thinking a lot about the Netheril who inhabited the Onrock Desert way back in Faerun history. In this video, I'll look at the history of Onrock and why it is now a deadly desert. If you're new here, welcome. I make all kinds of videos, but primarily videos on D&D lore. If you are curious about the worlds of Dungeons and Dragons, I'd love to have you subscribe. There's new videos each week, and sometimes some extra ones sprinkled in. Okay, so the Onorok Desert is a very large desert in northern Faerun, just east of the Sword Coast, going so far north it touches the glaciers found there. This is a really cool map, and let's zoom in on this Onorok Desert region. On a map, it kind of sticks out. The rest of Faerun around the desert is green, full of trees and life. There shouldn't be a climate reason that we have a dead desert plain in the middle of green vegetation. And you'd be right, it's not a climate desert, but a magical deadly desert. The whole area was changed by life-draining magic. Now, before I get into the specifics, let's talk about Onorok back when it was green and new. Way back in 329 DR, the Netheril was a group of people that lived in a magical society. It was a majocracy, with wizards ruling and making governmental decisions. For more info on the Netheril, check out my video in the top right corner or in the description below. The Netheril became so great with magic, they were able to cast 10th and 11th level spells. These spells were extremely complicated, but allowed them to have floating cities in the Anorak region. All this magical research and experimentation started messing with some of the creatures who were native to the region, known as the Ferrum. Now, the Ferrum look like wacky, waving, inflatable tube men, or maybe windsocks, but deadly. They are very intelligent beings that live in the Underdark beneath Anorak. The Ferrum also had a strong mastery of magic, which they used to defend themselves from the monstrosities that lived below the surface of Faerun. They never gave much thought to the humans who lived above until they became masters of magic themselves. The, the Ferrum, who are evil creatures, attacked the humans out of fear, fear that they would become too powerful. The Netherese humans now had magical ways to defend themselves, and the two races fought, off and on for a very long time. The Ferrum claimed the humans were interfering with their magic, however the people of Netheril proved too strong Strong, and the Ferrum were forced to devise a new strategy. They created a spell called Life Drain, which once cast drained life slowly on the surface. Without farms and food, the Netherese would have to leave. Thousands of Ferrum would sneak up to the surface, cast this spell, and then launch powerful attacks against the Netheril to keep them busy. If they were focused on the Ferrum attacks, they wouldn't notice and counter the Life Drain spell. They didn't care what happened to the surface because, well, they lived below it. Now, the people who didn't live in floating cities, subtly known as the Low Netherese, were killed and driven away by the Ferrum. With the population leaving Onorok, the mages soon left too. See, the high floating cities of the Netherese were no longer able to get food and water by the lesser magically inclined. Soon, a desert formed in Onorok because of the life drain spell. There was a small sea that dried up completely, and, well, this alarmed the elves of Evereska, who were baffled as to how to stop the Ferrum from destroying the entire surface with this spell. It was discovered later that once the land lost its life, it was near impossible to breathe life back into it. The soil was useless and wouldn't even hold water. It seemed hopeless until the Sharn became involved. Sharn, not to be confused with the Eberron city, are magical aberrations that also live in the Underdark. They were found just west of the Onorok Desert, and they could take on two different forms, a black, slimy, pseudo-fluid, and a large, hairless body shaped like a teardrop. They had three large appendages that ended in three human-looking hands for a total of nine hands, three eyes, two nostrils, and a large, teeth-ridden mouth. They weighed up to 3,000 pounds, standing between 12 and 15 feet tall, and glow under some kind of magical light. Now, in some of these pictures, the Sharn have three heads, and I'm not sure if that's a single Sharn, or if that is three Sharn together. Uh, let me know in the comments below. 
The Sharn embody magical chaos. The Ferrum started battling the Sharn when they pushed their Underdark territory west of Onorok. The magically inclined Sharn created a new spell that was designed to stop the Ferrum. They created a magical barrier around the Ferrum's home of Onorok. This barrier prevents the Ferrum from getting out. The Ferrum are essentially trapped in the desert of their own making, while others were free to come and go. This barrier stopped the life drain spell too, but the damage to Onrock had already been done. It's weird because the Sharn basically saved Faerunian civilization without a request or without payment. And most believe that after this, if the Sharn wanted to, they could have taken over the entire Sword Coast. But they, they didn't. They simply retreated back to the Underdark, not giving the Ferrum another thought. The Ferrum currently are still trapped, and lash out as trap creatures do. They are working to overcome the Sharn's spells, but are unable to as of yet. The AD&D resource Onorok says that some Zentarum might be under the influence of certain Ferrum, dropping rumors of great riches in the desert to lure adventurers there. This way, they can capture, interrogate, and enslave those people. Hopefully doing so, they'll learn how to defeat the Sharn magic. The Ferrum are not the only creatures to live in the Onorok Desert. A race of humans live in the southern reaches and are known as the Bedine. Because Onorok was a desert, I believe TSR thought they could fit in Middle Eastern stereotypes to expand the very European realms thus far. For example, the Bedine use primarily camels in Onorok, but why we don't see camels anywhere else in northern Faerun, it... exactly. The Bedine traded with others nearby, but predominantly lived in the desert. Not many Faerunians knew of their existence. The Bedine worshipped old Netherese gods, but these later turned out to be current Faerunian deities just under a different name. Specifically, Lathander, Salune, Talos, Siric, although how, Kelimvor, and again how, and Beshaba. But I, I think back in the day she was still combined, and was actually Taiki. It's all very confusing. The history of the Bedine is that they are the lower Netherese that were left after the floating cities fell during Karsus's folly. And in negative 339 DR, humans from Zakara came to the Onorok Desert via a portal. The Zakarans intermingled with the lower Netherese, and they became known as the Bedine. The Onorok Desert is divided into three major areas. The Sword, the Plain of Standing Stones, and the High Ice. Most of what we think of the Onorok Desert is the Sword. The Plain of Standing Stones is a more central area that consists of a large rocky plain. A whole area of it rises above the sand in a plateau, but the winds have carved the rock into spiky pillars and strange wave shapes. There is little vegetation, and the region is home to a great blue dragon named Gondaloth. There is a slow-moving river here as well, coming from the high ice that trickles into a sinkhole on the edge of the sword called the Throat. This river is called the River of Gems because of the many gemstones tucked away in the riverbed. The Shattered Tower is another famous location, which is a cloud giant's flying castle that crashed into the desert. It moved too close to the Ferrum and their magic and life-draining spells, thus crashing into the Onorok Desert. The High Ice is the icy region that goes forever north. No one has mapped the edge of the High Ice. A few ancient cities can be found there. A, a famous one is Spellguard, which was a Netherese city ran by the Lady Shirel of the High Mages of Netheril. Spellguard's people are long gone, but their castle remains, and remains full of Netherese treasure. Rumors are that the Lady Shirel haunts the castle as an arch lich, and although she is good in nature, she does not welcome intruders. The whole area is pretty deadly, and hopefully we'll get more information on the Netherese in the future. It's a great place to hide away powerful and evil magical items. Many go looking into the Onorok Desert, but few come out alive. One monster that caught my eye was the Tomb Tapper, or Thalud. These tall, naked humanoids have 
blue-gray skin and claws that can dig through solid rock, the Tomb Tapper was brought into 5e with the Icewind Dale adventure Rime of the Frostmaiden. They were originally created by the Netherese, humans that were changed with magic and earth. They were designed to seek out magic and were sent into the Underdark to find and kill the Ferrum. These monsters seek magical items but never use them. They will protect them for the Netherese Arcanist to use. If you're interested in the resources that I use to write this video, they are located in the description down below. Thank you for watching everyone. Thank you for liking this video. And if you are new here, consider subscribing. I make videos at least once a week, occasionally more often on D&D lore and other tabletop RPG related topics. Thank you patrons for keeping the lights on and I'll be back with more theories, lore and information. I'll see you all in the next video.